Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh. <laughs> Thankful for everyone that's come out to be with us. We've come to worship the Lord this evening. We got some people coming from out of town. We got some different singers coming to be with us. And we look forward to a good time in the Lord this evening. So let's all turn to page 10. Let's all turn to page 10. Stand if you will. Let's sing.
How do you still get that meeting in the air? Yeah. Amen. Uh, before we go any further, uh, I want to take prayer requests. I, I think you should remember uh, those in that collapsed building in Miami. Oh. Uh, what happened? Any survivors? I don't know what happened. Um, let's keep them in, in prayer. Anybody else have a prayer request this evening? Seems like everything is upside down, right is wrong, wrong is right, and left is right. We're looking for the Lord to come back. Yes, amen. Let's pray for souls. Continue to remember uh, Sister Shirley. Uh, you know, it's tough to leave a spouse that you've been married for as long as they have, and then suddenly for, for, without that part. Uh, let's remember her. Let's continue to remember Jerry. Uh, keep him in your prayers. Uh, he's, he's doing some better with his back. I, I, see, I see him walk around every day. Uh, it's good to see him in church last week. So let's remember Jerry. Anyone else? He's watching. He's watching. He is. He is watching. Yeah, he will. I don't think he can't hear you. Is your mic on, Jim? Yes. Okay. Great to meet you. Someone else. Uh, keep his mom in your prayers. Um, she, you mind if I say? Okay. They said that her stomach is paralyzed. She already weighs like 90 pounds. And they said her stomach is paralyzed. And uh, what else? They say she's got to gain weight somehow. And she's having issues. Just keep her in your prayers. Everyone will come gather around the altar. Uh, Brother Bob, you can use some time to be
could receive. Yes, Lord. Father, we are not believing, therefore we're not receiving. Yes. Father, you said we have not because we ask not. Yes. And when we ask, we ask no, amiss. Yes. Because we just wanted more ourselves be selves. Father, as you've heard the prayer requests, as laid up before you, we believe in the name of Jesus that you are greater than every sickness and disease and problem and calamity that can yes. come against us. Yes. You are with us as these yes. tragedies, calamities, trials and tribulations come upon us. You said we're not going to be alone, but you'll walk with us. Not that you're going to take away the trial and the tribulation, but that you'll go with us through it, giving us the victory on the other side. Sometimes, Lord, we need a good beating. We need to be beaten down so that we can look up and remember the sacrifice Come that on you made Come on. on the cross yes. for each and every one of us. Yes. What a privilege. Yes. What a blessing. Mm. Lord, we praise you. Mm. We lift you up and say hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for answered prayer. Now as we open up the service to the music, Father God, we just ask that the Holy Spirit would come through as a mighty rushing wind, freeing us from all our inhibitants that we hold inside because we're afraid Susie's looking at me and I don't want to move. Oh, George is over there sitting there all glum. And we don't want to get him excited. Well, Lord, we need to get excited. We need to praise you, Lord. We need to dance in the Spirit. We need to talk in the Spirit. We need to uplift the Holy Spirit. Because it's through Him and by Him that we have the power to overcome. Father God, in Jesus' name, help us to be all that you want us to be, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, protect us in all that we say and do. In your will, Father God. Your will, Father God. Your will, Father God, be done in Jesus' holy
I thought the train was coming. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. It's always out, so what you talking about? <laughs> so guess what? It's always messing up. I saw neighbors I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We all Mine, got mine's always out. on the one neighbor's porch. I'm always and we got to talk. And the Lord started opening doors. And I had the privilege to take them from Genesis to Revelation yeah, he is. in an hour and a half. With the plan of salvation mixed in between. I guarantee you, the six of them that were there went home and had nightmares last night of the fires of hell. And they got up this morning wanting to praise the Lord. And I just can't, I just hope you can feel the anointing that's still here. What happened last night. But it's amazing how God will open doors for you. You know, an accidental meeting is not accidental at all. Amen. They are divine appointments. Amen. If, the, if the opening's there, the Holy Spirit will Amen. nudge you and allow you to step in. Yes. If it's Amen. not there, You'll just say, hi, the weather's great. See you next week. You go on your way. Because you know you're not going to get anywhere. But the fields are white on the harvest. People are wanting something different. They're wanting God. And he is the only one that is going to fill their heart and soul. They knew that this old rambler was a rambler, a rambling man back in the time. They got the CD as a new man in Christ. I no longer smoke. I no longer drink. I no longer carouse. I don't want to do it. I have no desire Come on now. to do that. It had two of them confess they need to quit smoking. I said, we can pray it right now. Uh, well, I just started smoking again because of all the anxiety. I said, well, the Bible says you cast your cares upon him or he cares for you. And I said, he'll take that away from you if you let him. Uh, uh, and you know how it goes. But look for those divine appointments. Come on, yes. There's a lot of hurting, hurting, hurting people that can only be helped by Jesus. Amen. They need the joy of the Lord. They need the garment of praise for their spirit of heaviness to lift them up. We are the light of this world, but if the light loses its savor, it's fall of the world. And if we lose our savor, what are we preserving? Yes, come on. Come on now. Share what great, come on. Things the Lord Jesus Christ yes. is doing yes. in the midst of us so that we can go out and share it with the lost. Amen. So I can go too much. Praise God. Can I, I just want to he just fired me up. He says, and these signs shall follow them that be. What are these signs? Glum, gum, gum. Drag, drag, drag. No. He says these signs will follow them that believe. We can 
He talks right. with me, he talks with me, mm -hmm. he fellowships with me, morning, noon, night. Come on now. Open up to him. I said, Pastor, that is a preacher in the making right there. Oh, there's so much in this body of mine. Praise God for the black and white. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get to the Lord. Yes. Oh, Lord.
got some people that have traveled a long way to be with us this evening. I'm going to ask them to come forward this time. Uh, let's welcome Sheila Bazaar. Hello, everyone, and we shall have sound. How's everyone doing? Good. We, uh, my name is Sheila Bazaar. Who? Um, really? And I want to apologize. I forgot to mute one of my songs on here. And hello. So I speak when it's on mute. Sorry. Guys, I am real as it comes. My name is Sheila Bazaar. I am from Youngsville, Louisiana, down in the bayou. How many of y'all have eaten crawfish? You the only one? <laughs> Not me. I know. I know that y'all try it for me. Anyway, that is my fiance, Arthur Lord Patton, Jr. That is my son. He is 16 years old. That's Cody Bazaar. And then my daughter, that I may get up here to sing with me shortly, that's Whitney Wilson, and everybody thinks she's young, but she's on, she's 26 years old. So I, they have supported me through, I tell you, through everything. I am going to do a few songs for you guys, and I want to thank, wherever he went, Brother Larry, and God's Country Band. Thank you guys very much. You guys, when I heard you the first time, y'all blessed me. There's a connection there that I feel with you guys. I don't know what it is. I have no clue what it is, but the anointing. God is fixing to do something. I don't know what it is, but it's on the brink. Don't give up. It's coming. Yes. Don't give in for your battle. You're not alone. It's coming. Y'all been through the fire? I don't know. Y'all have been through the fire. Y'all have withstood so much. I don't know, but that's what God's showing me. He is going to reward y'all's faithfulness. It's coming. This one I'm going to do first is called Two Coats.
I know I tell you what a lot. You guys, I'm going to do some. I've seen some of you guys like, oh, Lord. Whew, that's not my stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I do a lot of songs. I do a lot of hymns. I do a lot of new. And I'm going to be doing. This next one I'm going to be doing is called The Anointing. I don't want y'all to look at me. Do not look at me. I'm just a willing vessel. I'm doing the same thing y'all are doing. I ain't doing anything different than what y'all are doing. I'm just a willing vessel. I'm a simple willing vessel allowing God to use me just as you are. Just because you guys don't sing doesn't mean I'm doing more than what you're doing. So I'm telling you now, God has got something in store for this church. It, it is coming. I feel a breakthrough. Pastor, if you're watching, get ready. I hear restoration. I see restoration, Pastor. It's coming. I've never met Pastor Parsons yet. But there's something about that man. There's something there's something. It's called the anointing. Y'all let God, let God touch you. Allow the anointing to come down and touch you. The Spirit Oh, the Lord God is upon me, yes. for he has anointed me to bring the tidings to the meek.
is upon me. He has anointed me to bring the tidings to me. Brother Larry, there's a change coming. There's a change coming. You have cried. You have asked God, what am I going to do? Why do I have to go through this? What in the world am I supposed to do now? You have asked God and cried. God is fixing to reward you for your faithfulness. God is fixing to reward you. There is a breakthrough coming. There is something that's on your heart that's very important.
Oh, Lord, that's so far. This 16 hours. You know, Lord. You didn't put me in I asked you to put me out of my comfort zone, but my Lord. I mean, that's me. <laughs> Woo, he did it. And this is our first trip. Me and Arthur has been on. Our first trip together is here. Um, we've only been dating for about a year. And uh, my husband, of a third, of, um, before him, he was killed in a logging accident back in 2010. He was run over by a skitter in the logging industry. Uh, he was only 36 years old, and I never remarried. Never remarried. Um, I just, I dated a little bit, but I never remarried until this one. About a year ago, I met him, and believe it or not, on Facebook. Did I say that? And that ain't me. I don't normally do that. That ain't this chick. You know, I don't do that. I don't do that, okay? <laughs> mm -mm. But God just, it was like this man here has treated me like a total queen. I and my kids... And God has blessed me with another son. I tell you, I am the happiest as I can be. And I have been able, I was talking to that brother earlier. I went up to the fellow that ran over my husband. I was able to go to him, look, I forgive you. I forgive you. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I forgive you. He's been in and out of mental institutions. And I said, quit walking down this road. There's no sense in it. Do you really think God wants you walking here and blaming yourself for something there's nothing you can do about? Let me tell you something. Just go forth with your life. Go forward. I come out and said, look, I forgive you. You need to learn to forgive yourself. And everything is great, and we have been really, really, we really have been amazing. And I can honestly say that I do not have any remorse, any unforgiveness in my heart, and I believe that's why God is able to use me. I really do, because I am, I am a willing vessel. I have no remorse, no grudges, no anger against anybody. That's God. Amen. Because uh, we have really, really, really been through the fire. After that, our house burnt down. After my husband was killed, our house burnt down. We lost everything. Total loss. Everything fell from the attic, from my husband. Everything burned. Everything burned. I could very well have anger against God. Easy. But guess what? I don't. Because God done that for a reason. We have a good God. He allowed that to happen for a reason. Because that ain't where he wanted me. Because I made a comment. I ain't moving again. <laughs> they don't take a rocket scientist to figure out, yeah, you are. <laughs> I do not have any. I thank God every day. If there's some of y'all in here that's struggling... God uses me in a way I don't understand. And I don't like it at times. I can look at somebody and just see what they're going through. I can, all I have to do is look in their eyes. God shows me what they're going through and I can tell it's like a movie playing in my head. I don't know why God has given me this gift, but I am very careful with it because God has anointed me in that area and given me that gift. And there's several people sitting in here right now. I know who y'all are. Several people sitting in here right now. Y'all are going through, y'all are literally going through hell and you're putting a smile on your face. you smiling through it. you saying, I got this. That's my favorite saying. I got this. Ask him. I got this. Y'all are saying, I got this. I got this.
No, you don't. You need Jesus to help you through this. You can't do it by yourself. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You can't do it by yourself. That Jesus does not love you. Listen to this song. I have experienced. I've had two brothers to commit suicide. I've had an uncle to commit suicide. I've had the Dallas sniper shooting. Y'all remember that? Brent Thompson was my first cousin. He was shot in the back. That was my first cousin. Then his son committed suicide in a park. He was only 19 years old. I tell you what, I know, I know what hurt is. I know what death is. I know what pain is. And I'm here to tell you, you are not exempt from Jesus loving you. Jesus loves you regardless of what you've done, what you said, how you acted, how you didn't act. He loves you anyway. You're going to have to learn to forgive yourself. 
Forgive yourself. Move on. Do it. Get it done. I just say, the Nike saying, just do it. I'm Cajun. Okay, what you want? Just do it. I mean, we need these pastors out of the pulpit. We need people in the pulpit to start preaching hell is hot and God is good. Amen. All this tickle in your ears has got to stop. Amen. Take a take off. I'm going to say what you want me to hear. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves you anyway. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. There's several people in here that you can't forgive yourself. You have done something that you think God can't forgive you of. Let me tell you something. Well, you think he can forgive you, but you can't forgive yourself. Regardless, Jesus loves you. Listen to the words to this song. When you feel forgotten and you feel all along when you feel like you just want to give up when you feel discouraged and everything's uncertain when you feel like you're just not good enough when it's slipping through your head and you don't Oh, you can. And there's still so much work you gotta do. It's easy to forget in times like this. Jesus loves you. Anybody watch your Facebook? Jesus loves you. He
Sheila? Sister Sheila? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Hey, um, Keith wants you to sing one more. He said if you would do some kind of take some out. Yeah. I have that one ready for some reason. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And he cares about everything you're going through. Your name is engraved on the palm of his hand. That's a promise you can hold on to. It's easy to forget in times like this. Jesus loves you. Yes. Amen. 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 Pastor King, this is for you, Pastor. Faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. And I know it's been a while, cause Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never had before.
Oh, y'all sing it with me. Sometimes it takes a long oh, sometimes time. it takes a mountain. Oh, sometimes it takes a sea. Come on! Sometimes it takes a desert. Come on now! To get out. The presence of the Lord is strong in this place tonight. Amen. And uh, Sheila, what a blessing to finally get to meet her. Yeah. And uh, she's talking about, she met her new fiance on Facebook. I met Sheila on Facebook. So yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it was great because it was a time during the pandemic and we lost all of our appointments. I mean, our calendar was zero. I think we did one in February, and uh, we just started getting cancellation after cancellation after cancellation, and, and I thought, well, Lord, I guess it's a, the year for studio and rehearsal, looks like, and uh, Sister Sheila had saw a song, Brother Keith just randomly re recorded a song that we did, Grace is a River, I believe, was a song, and uh, he just put it on Facebook, and Sister Sheila saw our little video, and uh, she said, oh, man, she reached out, and uh, just really befriended us and, you know, started. It was actually the first time we ever live streamed. It was Sister Sheila Bazaar. Never done it before. Didn't even know how to start the camera, did we, Sister? Y'all started out a hour <laughs> early. <laughs> because, you know, we just always did the live thing, and uh, that was fine. But it was just time, and uh, it was time to, to kind of branch out in that direction. And 
First time we did it, we did it higher before God. We did it. First time we had, yeah, the first live stream, we live streamed it. Uh, we, we did an hour before schedule. And uh, so we had to do that. That first live stream, we did two hours. Plus, we rehearsed an hour before. <laughs> So we took an hour uh, concert, I think, and it turned into like about a 12-hour day for us. <laughs> but it was good. And I'll tell you what, Sister Sheila has been such a blessing to us. And uh, we've met so many more people, uh, thanks to her, so many more. Uh, we've been able to really just expand our ministry and our, our songs. And uh, we've reached people that we never would have been able to minister or to reach or to share with had it not been for her reaching out and inviting us to be a part of her ministry. And so we're so honored and thankful for that. And uh, so, yeah, we're just going to do a few here. Uh, we want Sheila just to have her her freedom tonight. And uh, for the rest of those two services, she's going to be here also tomorrow, 630. And then we're going to reconvene Sunday uh, for a similar service like this. And... Uh, we want you to be a part of it. If, uh, if you can, tune in. Tell some people about it. Saturday, tomorrow, 6.30, we're going to be live streaming. Uh, then Sunday morning at 10, uh, we're going to be live streaming Sister Sheila. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have Justified from L Lancaster, uh, I believe is uh, where they're from. They're going to be here tomorrow. And uh, so come on out, invite a friend, tell some people about it. Let's fill this place up. We've got a nice crowd in here tonight. Uh, just for the first night, and thank all you all for coming out and being a part of this service tonight. We truly appreciate it. So yeah, tell a friend, invite someone, bring a neighbor, and uh, let's just have church. We'll do your training song, man. Ah, yeah. When I was just a baby, Mama taught me to Oh, 
send that one out to my two favorite JCs, John and Kevin, to Jesus Christ. Okay. He was a great example 
and uh, the best friend that you'll ever have, that you'll ever meet. And if you don't know him tonight, as you're watching here, and you haven't made that decision, please make that decision tonight. Let Jesus come into your heart. Just ask him in. It's easy. He made it easy. The Bible said, Whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but would have everlasting life. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you, my Savior. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Teach me how to be a better person, how to be a better man. And he will. Find somebody that loves Jesus. Find a local church. Go there. Listen to the teaching. And uh, God will lighten your way, brighten your path. And you'll never be the same. This is what this song is all about. If you're feeling stranded and lost, mercy is a bridge you can cross. If you're burdened with heartache and woe,
sacrificial blood of the Lamb of God. And we're so grateful for His sacrifice. Alright, we're going to do one more then we're going to bring, uh, we got Brother Jim out here, eagerly waiting and uh, yeah, so let's see what we're going to do. Watching from West Virginia. Yay. <laughs> West Virginia. It's my, it's my folks back home. Hello there. Stella. Tiger. Stella, yeah. My sister Stella. Thank you, sis. Make sure you tell all the uh, other 79 siblings that we're, that we're out here doing a little concert. But, uh, man, I come from a big family. I, I've never, I've, now, I, I, listen, I know some big families, all right? And I've known, met and known a lot of people that show some tremendous love, Sister Sheila, and Brother Tom, all you fine folks here, a lot of uh, extended friends and uh, honorary friends of GCB. But if you talk about a family filled with love, man, I, I'm just so blessed and honored to have the best family on the face of God's green earth. And I, I imagine we probably all feel that way about our family, but if you met my family, you would probably agree, man, my family comes second place, you know. But that's all right. But uh, I've just been so blessed. Uh, I had um, eight beautiful sisters and six brothers, and uh, and they they all just support me. And there's just I, here I tell this, and this is something that just really that's sometimes hard for me to believe because I have to go back and rethink sometimes to see if this is really true. But my own brothers growing up, I never seen us have a quarrel among themselves. Not one. Never. Yeah, never. Never saw my brothers fight. Never saw my sisters fight. Never amongst themselves. Now don't, don't, don't come and try to take on one of the Wilsons because I had a sister. My last name's Wilson. I had a, don't, Wilson. She's one of the Wilson clans. There we go. All the way from Louisiana. Who knew? I told you all seventy nine of them. But uh, 
but we just, I just was just, I could go on all night. Just a tremendous blessing to have such a wonderful family. That's funny. And uh, let's wrap it up here. Get Jim up here. Uh, what about a little hurricane action? They're watching from Texas, Mississippi, Alabama. Texas. And Stella said, for some reason, Rosetta and Joel can't get connected, but I shared it to my page. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Share, share, share. That's right. We're going to do a song here for you uh, since we're indoors called Hurricane.
preach, but I told him I'm not a preacher, I'm a teacher. So I didn't bring you a message. I'm not bringing a sermon this evening. I'm bringing you a, a lesson. A lesson. Um, during this lesson, I want, I want you to think about where the Lord has brought you from, where you stand with the Lord today, and what he has in store for you for the future. Before you start, I want to open up the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for, for everyone that came out to be with us, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you open up your word to us now. Open up our hearts and our minds. Let us understand. We pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. They said they can't hear you. Uh, I'll try to speak louder. Okay. <clears throat> um, turn to the uh, second chapter of Ephesians. Paul is writing in Ephesians to the church at Ephesus. And Paul is actually, at this time, he's in prison. And there's three different times during this in this, in this letter that he mentions that he's a prisoner. In, in Ephesians chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 6. And he's, a, he's in prison, but he's concerned about the church in Ephesians. Now, think about a baby that when it's born... It can't do a whole lot. It can't lift its head. It can't move its arms and its legs around. It can't walk. It, it, it can't even see very far because its, its eyes aren't, yes. aren't focused enough yet. But as it develops, as it gets older, soon it can see better. Uh, it, it learns how to use its arms and legs, and before you know it, it's getting into everything, uh, crawling around on the floor. And then one day it starts. It takes that first step. And then it falls down. And then it takes another step. And then it falls down. And it takes a few more steps. Before you know it, it's walking all over the place. And then, then it learns to run. Then it's riding a bicycle. And then it's asking for the keys to the car. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Lord. Then, but there's a moral development that takes place. But there's a physical development. It's born, and then it, it, it gets more active, and it does more things. And, and uh, it's the same with the spiritual walk. And that's what Paul was concerned about with the church at Ephesus. Because many people there have just received Christ as their Savior, but they really didn't know where to go from there, what, what to do. And so Paul is writing uh, in chapter 2. And you he hath quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And if we stop right there, that would be a very sad ending. That would be it for us. There would be no hope. But I'm so thankful for these next two words. Yeah. Most beautiful words in the Bible, without my, you know, in my opinion, but God. But God. Yes. Amen. Circle that in the Bible too. But God. Yes. But God. Who is rich in mercy for his great yes. love for which he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in it. And I want you to know as we go through this, if you have any comments, I'm eager to hear them. You know, I, I study this, and I, I welcome any comments. This is a lesson, it's not a sermon. Okay, so if you have any input, feel free. And you he has quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Um, quickened, what does that mean? It means something that was dead that is now made alive. We were dead in trespasses and sins. Um, when you think of dead, you think of a corpse lying on a table, not able to do anything for themselves, not to do anything to improve their relationship with God. Um, we were dead in trespasses and sins. I read one commentary that said that trespasses and sins were the same thing, but then I watched a preacher the other day on TV, and he said, um, a sin is like missing the mark. It's like you you try, but you, you fail. You come up short. Uh, a trespass is when you do something intentional. When you know the law, when you know what is right and wrong, you choose to do wrong. He said, if you, if you tell a child, don't walk across that floor, it was just wax. You just go walk across. And they, you know, if they, if they did it by accident, that's a sin. But then if they do it again, after they've been told, now it's a trespass. So we were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Now notice there, it's, it's got according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. This world is on a collision course with hell. Yes, it is. Christ. Uh, this world system that we live in is godless. They, they, that's what I was talking about earlier. Right is wrong and wrong is right. And what, what used to be wrong is okay and what used to be okay is not acceptable. We even celebrate it. Uh, that's the world we live in. Uh, but in the same sentence it says, according to the prince of the power of the air. And we know that's the devil. Um, Paul used a, a Greek word. Um, he didn't use the word aether, the Greek word aether, which means the upper atmosphere, but he used the word air, A-E-R, which is talking about, <clears throat> it was talking about the, the air around us, like, like a mist or a fog that's all around us, um, in a way preventing us from, from seeing heaven and from heaven to, to reaching us. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You know, man by nature does not seek after God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. Uh, we see back in Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned, they didn't come looking for God. God came looking for them, and where were they? They were hidden. They were, they were hidden because they were naked. They, they knew that they were naked. They were exposed. And, and they were guilty. And they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. This is something that came up from the ground. It was a poor covering. But God covered the ark with what? Animal skins. He covered them with animal skins and took the shedding of blood. <clears throat> I'm turning your Bibles to uh, Psalm 51 5. It's got a couple of cross references. Psalm 51 5. 
Psalm 51. says in verse 5, Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So we were born in the, in the sin. We have a sinful nature. And we do not seek after God. But God will draw us. He said that he will draw us. So, um, Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, for which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Aren't you thankful for the mercy of God? Aren't you thankful that He didn't give us what we deserve, but His grace, His unmerited favor. Look down and saw us where we were, and he drew us. Um, look back to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ yes. died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. sins, he quickened us. Um, when did the Lord start loving you? The day you got saved? Long before that. While we were in our sins, he loved us. Verse 6, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. us up together. Uh, right now, physically, of course, we're not in heavenly places. We're still here on earth. But we have been quickened. We have been made alive. It's as if we're already there. Like it's a done deal. But, but he's talking about it in the present tense that it's something that's going to happen in the future. raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. When I look at that, uh, in the ages to come, it doesn't say age, it says ages. It's not in just the near future, but in the far future. Once we get to heaven, a thousand years, ten thousand years, a million years, He's still going to show his love for us. He's going to show us how much he loves us. We don't even know. We think we know that he's going to continue to show his love for us. More and more and more. In verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are saved by his grace, by his unmerited favor toward us through faith. Faith in what? What Jesus did on the cross. There's no other way to, to have to right. through him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. It's not of ourselves. It's nothing that we did to earn heaven. It's a gift. And if it's a gift, 
get in the can It's getting pretty. A lot of works. That's even as you boast. Now, the Bible talks about works in a couple of different ways. And one way it talks about works in order to be saved, and those, those works will not get you saved. But then there are good works that are done once you are saved. And I want to tell you, you don't do works to get saved. You don't do works to stay saved. That's right. You do works because you are saved. Come on now. And he wants to use you. So in verse 10 it says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus mm-hmm. to good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. He wants to use us. He wants us to do good works for him because we love him. Because he first loved us. But uh, we're not saved because of anything we did. We can't earn our way. We can't do enough good works. We can't give enough money. We can't spend enough time. That's because of Jesus and what he did. If you are if you are lost, if you're watching this and you're lost, you can receive him this evening. He's waiting for you. Yes. You'll just accept the sacrifice that was made if you believe that he died for you and rose again. If you confess that he is your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Amen. And uh, I ask anyone here, if you're lost, if you want to come and pray, this altar, this altar is open. If you want to pray at home, Anyone has someone that they, they wish to pray for, someone that's lost, someone that's in the Lord, you're welcome to come to this altar and pray. This altar is open. Let's remember all of our lost loved ones. Pray that the Lord gives us opportunity to speak to them. And, uh, just give us the words to speak. Pray that the Lord to touch their hearts, put them under conviction. Anyone have any comments before we close? I've enjoyed this service. I've enjoyed all the singing and uh, testimony. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, anybody have any, uh, anything that they wish to add to this service? Testimony? I invite y'all to come back tomorrow and be with us. Uh, looking forward to another. Can I take up the offering? Uh, he said we'll do that tomorrow. Oh, can you yeah, do it? He texted text us. Uh, so we'll take up offering tomorrow and another one Sunday. Uh, so come back tomorrow night and be with us. We've got some more singers coming. We're expecting a good time in the Lord. I believe tomorrow is a song fest, right? Yep. Tomorrow is a song fest. Yep, 6 30. 6 30. All right, tomorrow. Be ready for a long one tomorrow. All right. All right. <laughs> if we do, there'll be no hang <laughs> Yeah. All right. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you, Father, for your amazing grace, uh, for your mercy. I ask you, Lord, to be with us as we leave. Bring us back tomorrow, a little further, the next point in time. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.